Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets from uh, the for the uh, Tuesday, 2nd of May, 2016. Interesting day today, folks. The market obviously sold off on mass uh, and certainly has gone into a, a risk aversion mode uh, quite substantially and quite deeply as well. Uh, let's try and decipher and understand exactly what's happening here now. Please do visit tradesignaler.com. Uh, the uh, signals and market updates from leading providers, so i.e. Uh, one of them obviously is uh, is uh, is myself and all, along with others uh, in terms of uh, market analysis and commentary etc. Is, uh, is certainly updated on there daily. So certainly download the app from the Google Play and the uh, the, app, the Android App Store and uh, certainly gain access to that insight. Now in terms of uh, the markets from a, um, a Asian market perspective, we had the uh, the Nikkei obviously away on holiday. Uh, the Asian markets were certainly open with the Shanghai closing up 1.8% and yet the market certainly seemed to have ignored that. Now, in terms of economic data and the reason for the main sell-off today uh, was obviously uh, we can attribute it to a potentially strong euro given the fact that the euro did hit a uh, pivot high of uh, 1.16 before it reversed on the back of weaker uh, obviously downgrades and growth and inflation. Uh, in term, and that certainly sent the euro down. Given the fact that the US dollar certainly has been butchered as well, that's one another factor, another reason for the uh, the actual uh, weakness in uh, in the dollar. Now, in terms of uh, chronologically looking at the economic data, let's try and understand and let's try and decipher. Okay, uh, in terms of the Aussie, we had the uh, interest rate cut overnight, although building permits were certainly stronger. We had Chinese data coming weaker than expected. We had UK data, market PMI coming weaker than, weaker than expected. We've had PPI data out of the Eurozone coming slightly stronger than expected. So that certainly uh, certainly helped the Euro rally well past the 1.16 before it reversed on the back of weaker inflation down the road going forward. And subsequently, we've had the ISM New York index uh, and the economic optimism index out of the US coming slightly stronger than expected. We've had the GDT price auction or the global dairy trade auction coming slightly weaker than expected. And then we're looking forward to Mr. Mester's speech, Fed member Mr. Mester, later on. And like I said, the focus has been mainly and squarely upon the Eurozone. And given the fact that we've had the Euro breaking through that 1.16, that certainly hasn't helped risk at all. And I have said before that the market is focusing on the USD JPY and the Euro USD. So let's just bring up those two charts and let's see exactly where we stand. Let's bring up the Euro USD first of all. And as you can see here, the Euro USD hit a pivot high of 1.1615 before it subsequently reversed quite powerfully and uh, certainly has hit the 1.15 uh, level. So that's quite a substantial sell off and quite a substantial move intraday as well. Okay, we had this uh, rising contracting wedge pattern before it eventually broke in the market. As you can see what's happened uh, subsequently. Now also the US dollar as well. Let me just bring up the US dollar index and uh, give you an insight there. Okay, here we go. So you've got the US dollar index here. Now the pivot low has been 121.5 and the focus really remains on that pivot low for now uh, in terms of the US dollar itself. If I go to the daily chart and you can see that we have put in a potential pivot low or a bottoming tail in as well. And gap fill certainly remains the, uh, the target or for the interim for now. Uh, the weekly chart, you are in no man's land. And uh, that ma the market, I mean, one of the things that's quite baffling is if uh, the Fed is talking up or attempting to uh, raise rates, and yet the US dollar is moving in the opposite direction, that certainly is a cause for concern. And there's certainly something wrong with regards to uh, to that picture, okay? So uh, is, is, the, is the US dollar certainly oversold? Yes, it certainly is. Uh, will the Fed raise rates this year? Yes, they attempt to, that they intend to. So should the US dollar be down here? No, it shouldn't. So this is why it's plenty baffled a lot of individuals. And I'll put my hand up, me, myself, first and foremost, okay? Okay, so this is where we stand, folks, okay? The uh, daily chart on the US dollar, certainly potentially coming into uh, support and putting in a bottoming tail for today. Let's look at the USDJPY trade now because that's the uh, uh, the other important variable. USDJPY mainly due to the yen. It's all about the yen, okay, folks? It's, the focus remains solely on the yen, so for now, okay? So... Let's just bring up the yen and see exactly where we stand with the yen. Okie dokie, right. So USD JPY, uh, the uh, weekly chart really tells the uh, the real story with the HNS formation being hit on the 106 level and therefore looking for a short squeeze now 
in the USDJPY. The daily chart, the USDJPY, has put in a bottoming tail as well. Whether or not that can hold, that's a different story altogether. Now we started the sell off from the 111 level, uh, and it'll be interesting to see. First of all, we need to go back and attack the previous support equals the uh, resistance zone, which is at 107.7, and then we'll see whether or not this uh, this uh, move certainly has legs or not. Okay, so that that certainly will be the first port of call. Okay, but with regards to USDJPY, certainly signs of a potential bottom and a reversal it is certainly overdue. Okay, now. Let's look at the actual uh, technical damage. Euro stocks. At the moment, we do have horizontal support in this zone, at the 2970 zone, and that's a zone certainly to observe for now uh, and uh, watch keenly uh, with regards to the next potential move. The daily chart of the Euro stocks is into that uh, Fib 61% retracement. You do have this rising diagonal trend line, so watch out for that as potential support as well. Okay, 60 minute chart. I've certainly shown you that we are into potential support. There is the unfilled gap below at 2945. Uh, it's very unlikely that will be tagged for now, given the fact that the euro has reversed quite sharply. The 10 minute chart of the euro stock certainly a holding support at 2975 zone and looking for a break and to test that 3020 zone above. Okay, in terms of the, um, the actual uh, French CAC, let's see exactly where we stand there. French CAC is into gap fill support. It certainly is holding support into diagonal trend line support. So they're looking for a bounce. 60 minute chart. Yes, you do have the unfilled gap below, but from my perspective, that won't be filled as of yet. And we certainly need to move higher before we attempt any uh, any uh, concept of filling that in. 10 minute chart did have an inverted head and shoulders formation. Didn't actually play out going into the close. And we'll see exactly how the US markets respond for the next potential move. Okay. Now, in terms of the uh, FTSE 100 now, let's bring up the FTSE 100. Let's see exactly where that's positioned. Okay, so the daily chart of the FTSE 100, uh, HSBC earnings, even though they were slightly on the uh, stronger side, they failed to uh, help the FTSE stay afloat, and the weaker UK PMI certainly caused further weakness. Also, with regards to news of OPEC, uh, disagreement still looming, uh, still no, no uh, bridging gaps between the uh, Iranians and the Saudis. And that certainly uh, did not help uh, the FTSE 100 today at all, uh, and certainly caused the, uh, the, the the sell off in the FTSE as we observed, and in the uh, oil price as well. Now let's bring up the chart of oil before we always, always look at the FTSE because the oil price is quite important. Now it is coming into a zone. The oil price is certainly coming into a support zone, which is at 42. Watch out for that 42.5. That will be watched with with uh, with a lot of interest. Uh, 42.9 down to 42.6 is a key support zone. We've had a pivot low of 43.3 thus far. If we use the FIB retracement tool from low to the high, you are into that FIB 75%. So this is a zone which we would expect the uh, FTSE certainly to uh, to bounce high on the back of uh, a higher oil price. Okay, okay. Now going back to the FTSE 100, given the fact that oil certainly is into support, even if you look at it on the uh, 60 minute chart let's just quickly zoom in you certainly have a horizontal support zone okay now going back to the FTSE 100 now on the daily chart you are back into that 200 ma back into previous resistance equals support at the uh, zone that we've seen here on the 6160 6170 zone okay and uh, given the fact that we failed to hold the uh, support at the uh, 62220 certainly doesn't bode well going forward uh, but you do have horizontal support in this zone here, and these are expected to hold. So certainly we'll observe those for now in terms of the next move. Okay, on the FTSE 100, so certainly support or pivot low held at the uh, 6160 zone, and that will be the base that we project from. Okay, I understand. Okay, the 10-minute chart of the uh, FTSE 100. Uh, again, we did attempt to bounce from 6160, so certainly a, a, a case there for an inverted head and shoulders formation. So that's certainly something to watch out for. No lower lows. I'm now looking for a higher high uh, uh, and a higher low before we see the higher high. And any any rise higher will be met with resistance at 62220. That certainly is a zone to watch out for on the FTSE 100. Okay, so I think that's a summation of the uh, European markets. Be sure to uh, uh, visit tradesignal.com to download the latest app. Goodbye now.